Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. Well, that was particularly embarrassing, wasn't it? I appreciate the right buttons, but the one to say, share the screen. So, g'day, everyone, and welcome to a rather embarrassing beginning to talk nerdy to me. Uh, I'm here with my co-hosts, again, MPS and Jeffro. Feel free to laugh at my expense. How are we, lads? All right, dude. That's not the first technical error we have and probably won't be the last. So, let's just uh, move along, move along. And now we've got our very first presentation uh, coming up. So I'm going to press some buttons. And this is actually a Jeffro one. So here we go. Um, we're looking at some memes. So there you go, Jeffro. Pass over to you. Thank you so much. So uh, memes are something that was introduced to me by my son. And um, I could see why he liked them because it's full of uh, interesting humor and commentary and all that. So. I've done a little bit of a deep dive uh, tonight just to be able to sort of look at the history of memes and particularly the science fiction ones. So the actual uh, word meme started off uh, in 1976 where it was um, used in a book and it's to be referenced to something that's hosted in the mind of one or more individuals. So I think sort of uh, memes sort of aptly fits. And as the internet um, grew, memes started to become sort of quite popular as a means to be able to make as said comments and funnies and it started off when um, youtube began and that's when it really sort of uh, started to rock it uh so what we have here is uh, one best known example so what you see is a picture of um um rick astley and back in 19 let me just read my notes uh uh sorry no uh 2005 there was a um uh, an internet sensation where people would try and trick other people and it eventually led to the person accidentally clicking on uh, a clip of rick astley's never going to give you up so that became known as uh, being rick rolled so this is where i thought well we'll start the uh, the first slide and sort of reference the, um, the the thing that became hugely popular and that's you were going to get rick rolled and uh, his career actually uh, resurrected in a big way after that thanks to uh, uh, people using that clip as a gag uh, with the description of uh, memes there is one that's called a dank meme so i don't know if anyone's heard of that or not but uh, uh, i said my son often referenced it and it's described as internet in jokes that are so played out that they become funny again or so nonsensical that they are funny. So the format is usually in the form of a popular television show, movie, video game, and users then add humorous uh, text and images. And uh, these are the ones that we're going to look at tonight. So the first one we're gonna look at tonight is one that was referenced as the Star Wars kit. So in 2002, this 15 year old kid from Canada recorded himself doing the, um, the fighting movements of Darth Maul from uh, episode one. Now, a couple of uh, his classmates happened to come across this footage that he'd filmed on video and then released it to the public. And it became a, um, an internet sensation. So what people were doing was then using this footage. And as you can see in the, um, in the picture here, they're actually adding in real life um, uh, sort of um, laser swords, for want of a better word. I don't know. Uh, but, I like uh, how you say like real life laser swords. It's like they're <laughs> out real life All right, but you know what I mean. So, <laughs> so effectively, uh, his broomsticks were coming the, uh, the double bladed lightsaber. Uh, and it was interesting to note that with various different versions of this uh, video clip, and this, this, this spins me out big time. This clip was seen over a billion times. Yeah, I mean, it, it was one of the first sort of memes to come on, but yeah, uh, a billion times. So that's just um, uh, crazy. So the next one we have is- I gotta, I gotta say, can we go back to it one second? Sorry, guys. I gotta say, I felt sorry for this kid back in the day. He was trying to do something that he obviously loved and wasn't very good at it, and that's fine. 
but to have someone sort of pick on you for that later on, yeah, there's a bit of funniness towards it, but after a while, it's like, the kid's trying. I want to see what other people sort of do. You know, so I did feel sorry for this guy. Yeah, but he became effectively famous for it. I mean, sure, it was hard work in the, in the, in the initial short term, and he got picked on a lot, and he's like faces all over the world on the internet. But uh, I think he ended up becoming a successful businessman or something in real life. But uh, uh, he did sort of leave himself open for uh, ridicule. I mean, you're filming yourself doing stuff that you can't really do. Uh, if it gets in the wrong hands, and that even happens today, it's just going to be your undoing. So, but uh, anyway. Yeah, he managed to, uh, I think, take uh, someone to court. So he did actually get some money out of it. But yeah, you're right. It was like he never really wanted to be famous. So, you know, this when this happened, you know, he became infamous. So the moral of the story is, if you're going to do something you're not entirely comfortable with, don't film yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the uh, the next one we have is the uh, selection of uh, John Luke Picard memes. So here's some uh, examples of the various different styles that we have. So uh, we have the uh, the angry uh, Picard, we have the the excited Picard, and we have the face palm Picard. So uh, with these ones, uh, people often use these uh, memes as a way of uh, conveying either being ir irritable or disappointed. And um, and these started back in 2005. Uh, so um, the actual uh, annoyed one, which you can see uh, listed there on the left, oh, come on, you don't even know what a meme is, actually comes from the episode uh, Menage a Toi, which appeared in 2000, and that one actually appeared in 2012. So if you're ever trying to work out where did he do that particular movement, that was in that particular episode. Uh, so what usually happens is that someone will put something on and then everyone will go and copy it. And this, and there's a website called Quick Meme. And what they do is they post up images and then people can title anything they want on them. So in this particular case with the uh, that particular one, it accumulated over 6,400 submissions. So using that image, there was 6,400 different versions of this particular meme. And um, it, yeah, and it's 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 still being used even today. So uh, it's, uh, I said, you probably, if you've been on Facebook, you probably would have seen some of those, um, those images and some of those memes. So um, still going strong. I like, um, just quickly, Michael Herbert has said, good thing there was no camera phones back in my day. It was like, what are you trying to say? I looked all right back in my day. <laughs> he might not, have been, might not have been wearing this, but still, <laughs> all good. Sorry, Jeffrey, keep going, son. Yep. So, um, the uh, the next one I've got, if uh, we move on, is red shirts. Now, of course, um, red shirts have been sort of associated with the uh, the most expendable um, crew members, and here's just a few of the uh, the sample of the memes that have come up uh, regarding uh, red shirts. Now. Um, a recent talk at New York's Museum of Mathematics entitled Star Trek, The Math of Khan, that's true, uh, explored, <laughs> explored the probability that red shirts are more likely to die uh, than anything else. So they've actually done serious discussions about, uh, about the, the red shirt characters. Uh, by determining how many red shirts were aboard the ship at any one time, they were able to figure out that uh, although 58% of the dead were red shirts, only 10% of the red shirts died, as opposed to 18 of the gold shirts and six of the blue shirts. So even though the common uh, conception is that if you're a red shirt, you're going to die at the end of the episode, once they actually looked at the statistics, it just meant that uh, only 10% of red shirts died, whereas the, um, I said, 18 of the gold. So I thought that was an interesting bit of uh, trivia. I mean, you wouldn't get as many gold and blues going down onto um, uh, being involved in battles and all the rest. But do you remember the meme? The meme that actually has the three guys, the four guys, sorry, on the planet, right? So you got, and the, and the meme actually said, you know, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and Ensign Ricky beam down to the planet. Guess who's not coming back? And I reckon, <laughs> yeah, <that's>... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ensign Ricky became a famous character because of that. So there you go. The uh, the next one we have is going towards Lord Lord the Rings. And this one is the one simply does, or oh, one does not simply. So this is actually a well-known quote that people have borrowed from the first uh, Lord of the Rings by the character Boromir. So um, 
the first uh, meme for this one was uh, one does not drive into Mord Mordor that appeared in 2005. And in 2007, someone did uh, a, no one does not simply have a tank tank that a tank cat into Mordor. So people just got more and more sort of uh, uh, crazy with one does not simply and then sort of uh, as you can see from here one does not simply walk into Mordor with silly walks one does not simply walk into Mordor that's a good one actually. and uh, of course the, uh, the the Disney uh, mean one there so uh, yeah it's uh, it's one that uh, you don't see as much these days but for a while there it, that was sort of uh, a popular one one does not simply walk into Mordor now we're going to move on to a more Star Wars related one and this one is the iconic it's a trap so I don't think I have to explain exactly where that one comes from but uh, it first started off believe it or not back in the early 2000s so I mean well, we're 2020 at the moment so you know we're talking about something that originally began about you know 15 17 years ago and it was quickly adopted as a uh, reaction image to warn others of potential bait and switch pranks so you know it's a trap so um and then when uh, youtube actually launched in 2005 then it became a, a real real sort of popular meme to be able to see uh, literally to the point where there was a thousand fan-made videos featuring um, uh, variations and parodies of uh, Admiral Akbar's line. And um, and then it span off a little bit later on, as you can see with the one on the uh, left. Oh, no, sorry. Um, I actually haven't got it, but there was, but yeah, there was one that was, it's a tarp instead of it's a trap. It was like, it's a tarp. And, you, and one which I wasn't able to include, where it's like, um, uh, Admiral Akbar holding up a tarp. So, uh, yeah, these are um, these are still going strong. These it's, it's a trap ones, and particularly when we had the Family Guy uh, do one of its Star Wars specials, and it was called It's a Trap. Just started the whole thing up again. So that's how well known it is. The, I love that uh, one on the right hand side, the sound of music one. That is actually very clever. It's a box yeah, trap. That is, <laughs> that's <clever>. the best. <laughs> and of course the. Um, the middle one being um, Disney related to Parent Trap, the uh, the old movie. So that was again, I thought, quite a cute um, play on words there. The uh, the next one we have is just a selection of various different Star Wars ones. So on the left, you'll be able to see the um, the Stormtrooper. Now that particular image in itself is one that you often see uh, in various different memes. But I thought it was funny uh, in association with the um, uh, the gunshot range uh, Ewok uh, shooting there that uh, that made it really funny. Uh, in the middle there, we have the uh, the Force in its own collectible packaging, and of course, as we know, <laughs> Force is not something that uh, you can actually see. <laughs> and and on the uh, the right, uh, Star Wars ones often. Um, feature a lot in holiday uh different celebrations so uh there's one that i've got a little bit later on that's a, a thanksgiving one but of course uh this one's for christmas and i just love it because it's simply a real dad joke if you can sort of read that you know how did darth vader know what luke got him for present for christmas he felt his presence yeah <laughs> i just thought that was just such a terrible joke but uh i mean it's good i i thought uh, i'll include that one that's the kind of thing that EPS should be dropping every couple of days in his humour gags on Facebook. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the next one we have is just a collection of just various different ones. So um, one of the one of the uh, things about the one on the uh, the left is that there was a a character that was created in the early two thousands that was uh, was a gnome, and then um, a little bit later on someone started creating these uh, memes about the gnome where it's like, you've been gnomed. It's like, you know, you've been had, you've been done. So the, the, the actual gnome itself became quite a popular sort of meme subject. And then, of course, the next um, metamorphosis of this, of course, is to play on the uh, the Twilight Zone, which I thought was cute. Next stop, the Twilight Gnome. So I thought that was good. 
The middle one there, um, nice little, again, play on a popular um, uh, double take on the two different uh, shows. You've got uh, Star Trek and you've got Sherlock. So my name is Khan. No shit, Sherlock. So I thought that was very funny, and I thought I'd uh, include that one. And I didn't, on get, the, I, I didn't get that. Did um, one of those two characters play Sherlock Holmes or something, did he? Yeah, Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch played Sherlock in a... In a oh, of course. Movie. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, move on. Um, and um, when Disney um, uh, took over um, uh, Fox and, of course, uh, inherited the, um, the rights to... Uh, uh, Star Wars, then we got all these um, uh, Disney princess memes. So, of course, that main, uh, meant that Princess Leia became a Disney princess. So this is like just one example of where they sort of said, well, now we can call her a Disney princess. So mm. uh, that one I threw in. And uh, just to finally wrap up, just a few uh, odds and sods. Look, we're almost done. No! <laughs> Sorry, just swatted the fly. Um Leading to our lucky last one of the uh, the night. Thank you all for watching, and for you clever folks, hope you enjoy the gag. Yeah, yeah. It took me a while to work that one out, actually. Did it? Oh well, <laughs> you can't be as much nerd as what I thought you were. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Thank you good. so much, and thanks, Dags, for uh, being my uh, my photo operator for tonight. So, I uh, yeah. hope you enjoyed internet memes. There you go. And for those who haven't picked it up, and if it's as stupid as I am, uh, it's a resistance thing. So there you go. Um, yeah, well, it, yeah, the symbol is resistant, resistor. And yeah, anyway, um, can I put up a couple? Of course you can. All right. Because it's, because I it got to. Yep, that one. Whenever you're ready, please, sir. Okay. I like how Anne said Frankenfurter is a Disney queen. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> This one I came across the other day, but not in the Lego form. I found another version, but this is a quick one for the Lego fans and the Batman fans and the Star Wars fans. Let's see if you get it, dude. Do you understand the references? Party on Wayne, party on Darth. Uh, well, no. It's it's um, Wayne's World. On, Wayne's World, oh. yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the next one is... Another one which, you know, is uplifting. Strong people don't put others down. They lift them up. <laughs> so, <laughs> just trying to be positive on a Friday night, which uh, in these times. There you go. Oh. Speaking, of, speaking of nerds, and decided so, so yeah. to stick your nose in and said, oh, the symbol for OMS is measurement of resistance. And all that. it's like, yeah, dude, it's okay. Just chill out. It's all good, mate. <laughs> it's all a bit of fun, mate. <laughs> he's gone into, in, in electronics mode and he's going <laughs> to tell us all about the bits and pieces that go on. But isn't, oh, yeah. isn't, isn't, isn't aren't ohms what you do when you meditate? You go, ohm. Uh, um, yeah. Very good. So well done, Jeffro. And there'll be a history of memes there, which I didn't even know about. So uh, there you go. But uh, as we once discussed on uh, Sci Fi Zone, actually, ironically enough, it's almost like uh, famous movie quotes of the 21st century have all been pushed aside uh, for memes. Memes are more the gag or the thing now that people focus on, whereas if you think of classic movie quotes, sci-fi and non-sci-fi, there aren't a lot from the 21st century, not nearly as many as there was from, say, the last 40, 50 years of the 20th century. So there you go. All right. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything uh, before I wrap up. So I'll get some final comments from my guys. Now, if you joined late and you're wondering why MPS and Jeffro are in the wrong spots, uh, MPS had a bit of a technical thingy happen earlier and he's just reappeared somewhere else. So, uh, there you go. It sort of did, you know, weird, uh, weirded up the dynamic of the entire room. So, there you go. Uh, before I go, uh, okay, so I'm going to do it in a different order now. So, uh, Jeffro, any final comments? Amaz, a day helps you work, rest, and play. <laughs> oh, geez, give it up. Freaking up. <laughs> oh, geez, it doesn't get any better than that. MPS, you got anything for us, mate? Uh, I'd rather have a Milky Way. Yeah, very good. There you go. Everybody's saying good night. We're going to say uh, good night as well. So uh, there you go. So whatever you do, enjoy the rest of the week. We'll see you next Friday, 8 o'clock. We're still on Friday. It's all good. And in the interim, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay. Farewell and uru. Boy. See ya. Watch side.